Hey everyone, it's Sim Farmer and welcome back to Carmsden Farm for episode 11 of our Let's Play series. So we are now into September and we have got our first few pallets of cheese being produced by our new dairy. Got a little dairy container here, so we've got three, four pallets and the a fourth pallet is under, under, underway. So we've got 803 litres of the fourth pallet. We've still got 4,000... 4, 743 litres of milk in there so that's fine for now. Our sheep that we bought last time have also started to produce their first lot of wool so they're doing okay. So what we're going to do to get started is we're going to head over to field 21 and finish off the barley harvesting contract I've started. So I did mention in the last video I wanted to try and get that contract if possible so we could get some extra barley for our chickens. So I did manage to get that contract and I've already made a good start on it, well probably done 70% of it. So we'll head over there now to finish that off and then we can get that contract complete and then have a look again some barley in our own field. So one thing I also did as well was the canola harvesting contract in field 20 which is just to our right hand side. So that's all done, I've harvested all that, delivered all the canola. I have not yet completed the contract, so we'll do that in a second. Uh, we got an extra 6,400 litres, I think it was, from that contract, uh, which is now back in the farm silo. So we are here at field 21, so this is the equipment I borrowed for this contract. So we just pull up over here, not too far into that ditch. So yeah, we got the JCB fast track. Um, we also got the uh, John Deere 8R, I think it is, and the Bergman Orgwagon Stroutman trailer, and the Case Axial Flow 9250 with dual tyres. <laughs> but yeah, fortunately, there is the long way round if you come right the way up to the top of the map and come up that way, you can get f into this field fairly easy with this combine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely not a combine that's suited for this map in uh, some of the fields. So we've just got this last little bit to finish off here and then deliver the last little bar, uh, last load of barley to the uh, delivery point. We should have enough space in the, the trailer there with the fast track on to fit the rest of this field into and then we can make one final delivery to complete the contract and hopefully we should get a little bit of excess on estimating off what we got from the previous field that we did on field 23 this one being a little bit larger field we should get around about 12,000 litres excess so 10 to 12,000 I imagine so while we'll do this we'll just check the actual progress so we've got I had 92% complete so far I did borrow the equipment for this contract and used it to do field 20 as well so we can accept that so we've got 9700 for completing that one so we'll collect that so that takes us up to 50,397 so just over 50,000 so the plan the main plan for today will be to get some barley in our own field um, I also do want to possibly look at uh, one of the small areas of the map uh, possibly buying that and then to get in some uh, or a greenhouse or two on there if we can again that will just give us another uh, revenue stream for the farm and for doing the barley I'm gonna take our Amazon a seed drill we've currently got and upgrade it for a slightly wider one that can also direct drill so potentially we can look at getting rid of the disc arrow and the seed drill because uh, we won't need the disc arrow if we get a direct drill and at the moment I'm not planning on doing any crops that require a planter just yet and um, that was is something we'll have a look at in the future but for now we'll just stick with stuff we can do with the grain header we've got so crops we can harvest with that so we don't have to buy a new header and also then we can just use the seed drill so I do want to do barley so we've got some feed for the chickens 
we'll do in the half of the field that we had canola in and then the other half of the field we'll do with linseed uh, just to see what that's like, how, how well it yields and how much money can, we can make from that uh, with it being a new crop to this map uh, not one I've done before so 72% full don't know if we'll finish this bit off before the combines fall but we'll, we'll give it a go and um, we do need to try and get this finished as well because we have we have got some rain due in an hour or so so we should be finished I will increase the time a little bit I can't remember how much is left in the trailer it's been a couple of nights since I did the harvesting up to this point we may just fit this in the field um, in the field we may just fit the rest of this into the combine 10% right, left to go See, it's going to be close. I don't think we're going to quite fit it all in. Uh, they are full. So we're going to unload this and just finish off that last little bit. So we need to deliver this to the same cell point we did for the other contract, so the, the grain cell point down at the main store. If we just drop this into there, and then probably get that last 500 litres or so in the field. Let's just check how much is in the, uh, if I can get in the right tractor. So, what's that, 37,000, so about 40,000 litres. Forty-one. Yeah, so we're going to have about 45,000 litres, I think, in total. So we're 94% complete on now. I can't remember how much total we delivered um, the percentage wise last time I took any down there so we'll just finish this last little bit off and that contract I think will probably be close to another 9000 so it should take us close to 60 uh, that will give us more than enough money to sell our current seed drill and then leave us with enough money to buy the new one so there we go that's the harvesting all done so we'll get this unloaded last 442 litres and then we'll head down the store and then we can complete this one So 45,279 litres to deliver, uh, I'm hoping we get around about 12,000 litres to keep from this and that will have given us about 20,000 litres of barley in total which I think should be more than enough to keep us going until next harvest for the chicken feed so we shouldn't have to buy any more. So we just come up to the farm store to deliver this last bit of barley for the contract. Let's see how much we get left over. So there we go, 12,734 litres. I wasn't far off with my estimate, well. I said about 12,000. 
So we did get a little bit as well for selling a little bit before I stopped it. And actually get out of here. <laughs> Made it so difficult that time. So that's put us on oh, 51,000, I was going to say, put us on 51,000. On the way back from uh, the field, I did spot another collectible just on the side of the track. I don't know, I didn't spot it yesterday. I went up and down that track about three or four times delivering uh, the, the other loads of barley and just next, uh, next to that little, um, down the side of the track there's like a little compressor unit thing. Uh, it was just next to that and I, <laughs> I don't know how I didn't spot it before, uh, but I did pick that up. So we're going to drop this off into our farm silo and then we'll get our seed drill and possibly bring the disc arrow down as well. We'll get those sold and then get our new disc uh, seed drill so then we can make a start on getting our barley in our one half of the field. Okay, so let's get this barley in the silo. So that should give us yeah, just over 22,000 litres of barley in the silo. What does that know? Does that... that can't be right, can it? Does that include? No, oh, no, it must have, it must have already put <laughs> ten thousand liters in when I looked at it. I was going to say that doesn't seem right. So yeah, we've got twelve thousand liters in there, and then the rest of the barley, I think the eight thousand liters that went into the feed trough for the chickens. We just pull this up to the side here, turn the engine off and lights off. Uh, we can complete that contract and we'll go and jump in the Massey. So that contract is now complete. So 9,885 with the reduction for the lease costs. So we can collect that one. So it takes us up to 61,540. I think the seed drill I want to get is 44,000. What happened then? I think I may have placed that toolbox for the workshop a little bit too far over. I think I just caught the collision then coming out there. Or oh, maybe not. Huh. That was a bit weird. It seemed like I hit something, but there was nothing there to hit. Invisible collision then, maybe it's because I left the doors open when I saved the game and loaded back in. I think our current seed drill is this Amazon which is a 4 metre, uh, it's not a direct drill. Uh, the new one doesn't fertilise it the same as this one but that's not too much of an issue as it's going to be far quicker to fertilise the field with a spreader or a sprayer than it will to go over it with a disc arrow we've currently got. I'm still having the issue with the uh, brakes seemingly not working. It seems to be worse in this tractor than others, but I've noticed in quite a few of um, the vehicles that when I try and brake, it doesn't respond at all. Right, so if we can empty the seed out. Get that lift up. So I'll get this down to the store and we'll get this sold. I may leave the disc arrow for now because uh, we don't need the money for it at this current time so we'll keep hold of that just in case. Uh, we'll just sell this for now and we'll buy the new disc, uh, the new seed drill and get that filled up with seed down at the store as well while we're there. And then we can head back and then start make a start on getting the barley in that one section of the field. Well, right, let's get this sold. I'm not sure how much we'll get for this. No idea how much it's worth. Let's get that 
disconnected and dropped off. So why is that for me? He's trying to remember where the actual workshop trigger is. <laughs> so there's no trouble with having, when you're swapping and changing maps, the interactive zone markers. Oh, I do also have an issue intermittently with the um, yeah my Xbox controller not working on the trigger. Okay, that's a bit weird. Not sure what's going on there. Yeah, something. I think I've got a mod conflict with something, but I'm not sure what it is that's uh, causing a few issues with some of the controls. Um, let me turn on the interactive zone markers just to make sure. Uh, workshop triggers completely disappeared. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I've managed to find out what the problem was. It seems to be that because I sold the um, the land that zero, it removed the uh, trigger for the sell point. Uh, while we're here and we have the money, we'll repair that. Uh, repair that before we sell it, and we'll repair that. So this is worth fifteen thousand two hundred twenty-seven. So we'll sell that. Yeah, so it seems that when I sold the uh, land last time, so I, I removed owning this because we had that problem with the environmental score being lowered, wanted to get rid of. That seems to have made the triggers disappear. I don't know why that's linked to the land at all. That seems a bit strange, but yeah, that seems to be what the problem was. Um, so we want to buy seed drills. I'll just check the used equipment sales first. I don't think possibly that could be useful for us for fertilizing rather than using the trail spreader. And it's got much wider working width and holds a decent capacity as well. And 8,480, it's not too bad. I definitely don't think we're going to need a John Deere cotton harvester. Uh, capacity of this trailer. 15,000 goes up to 17,200, which will be 11,000. I don't think that's really any bigger than what we've already got. And I've, we're already struggling a little bit with a full trailer load going up some of those hills, so I don't really want to get anything bigger than what we've got just yet until we've got a bigger tractor at least. So we're going to go for the Keckling Jockey 600. So I've mentioned this is a direct drill but it doesn't fertilize, it only does seed. We can change the color. I think we'll keep it in the standard blue. And I will increase the work speed just a little bit. Not that we'll use it that fast, but it just gives you the option to do it if you're struggling. Um, I forgot to check, we need seed, so the Capacity of this is 2,800 litres, so if we get three big bags of seed We can get that filled up while we're down here, so I'll get this filled up and then we'll head back up to the farm Hopefully the rain will pass, it's only due to be a, a quick shower, so I think it's to show on the weather forecast uh, it's going to clear up again by 10. Uh, as you can see, we've already got the cloud thing saying it's the rain is going to clear. So yeah, we'll have a slow drive back up to the farm, and hopefully the rain will have cleared up by the time we get there. We'll get that attached and get the hoses connected up. It's so, like one hose we don't need. <laughs> yeah, so I'll get this filled up, and then we'll head back up to the farm. Right, so after our leisurely drive back up the road, the rain has passed, so we can now get on with sowing our barley for this, oh, say next year, next year's harvest, but, but sowing our barley for this year. So we'll make a start over here. So I do have the proceed mod in, so we can put tram lines in. 
I don't know if I had quite a few questions about how I'll do the tram lines on the time lapse videos. I've been using them on No Man's Land. So it gives me a chance to kind of explain how I do it. All right. The Proceed mod is by Wopster. Um, and it's kind of linked with his GPS mod, which I don't use. So we can't use the full auto feature where it automatically switches the tram lines on every row you set it to. So I have to do it manually. Uh, but I'll just show you how I do it and how I link up the uh, link up the tram lines between the headland and the inner section of the field. So we'll do the first pass around the headland, obviously without the tram lines on. And we also need to make sure we don't go over the boundary to our divide in the middle of the field here. So what I will do is we set this to about 70 degrees I think we had it so if I set the enhanced vehicle control mod and then set our lanes up so that's what we'll do the tram lines uh, to seem to be struggling in first gear then we've got more than enough horsepower for this so I don't know why we Seem, seem to be picking up a bit now. Just seem to, to have a moment where the tractor was struggling to uh, get the correct gear. So yeah, what we'll do is the first pass of the headland without tram lines, and then what I usually do is the second pass round uh, with the tram lines enabled. Then I'll do a third pass without them. So that gives you an 18 meter centers on your tram lines then. So we'll be able to use an 18 metre wide spreader, uh, sprayer on those tram lines to cover the field. I've seen sharp corners like this you won't get right into the corner. So what you may have to do is either do that separately or just leave that tiny little bit of the corner as a slightly lower yielding section. So when we come to do the weeds, I'm not sure if we'll use a mechanical weeder or get a sprayer. Uh, uh, using a spot sprayer is better for the env environmental score, but it's obviously not essential. And you can still use a mechanical weeder, but you don't get as big of a boost for weed control. Uh, I'm not sure why a mechanical weeder's less effective in the environmental score than using a uh, herbicide I would have thought it would be you get a better score for spot spraying herbicide so you're not spraying the whole field like a blanket coverage uh, than doing it that way uh, but a mechanical weed drive would, would have thought would be the uh, better option uh, but yeah, I'm not sure how they quite work out that, but that's how it is. So we could lease a mechanical weeder as long as we can get the weeds in the first stage so they're not too big. Because um, we're not, there's weeds in the field currently, we're not actually removing them. Um, it, weeds are actively growing straight away. So I do think they do tend to go to the slightly bigger stage than when the crop grows so we may need to get a, a mechanical hoe weeder uh, which is a little bit more expensive than there's only one currently that I'm, I'm aware of I've not seen any modded ones so that's the first pass around the headland done so what we'll do is we'll bring our tram lines off the edge of the field so if I remember how to turn them on I think it's left control R. So we'll drop that down. And then we should be leaving the tram lines. Yep. So we'll do the second pass around the headland, keeping as close to that first one as we can. 
And what we'll do for the corner is we'll switch them off about there. And we'll just do right into the corner. And we may also have to do just so we don't miss a bit. It's just filling that little bit. I know this is not the way you would do it, it was just the way it's kind of going game. I was presuming it's probably better to just sew the whole field first and then put the tram lines in afterwards, maybe a slightly better way of doing it. Uh, the trouble with that is then it's difficult to know exactly where to put the tram lines around your headland. So if we drop that back down, switch the tram lines back on. And we should be able to bring that round. And then we can enable the enhanced vehicle control mod so we get a nice straight line. And there you go. And then the next pass pass round the headland will do without the tram lines. And then we can start doing the up, up and down rows. What I usually do is uh, one row, then I'll skip a row to leave where the tram lines will be. And then I'll do all the rows without tram lines active. And then I'll go back round, linking up from the headland tram line into the up down rows and try and work out the best way to go. So when you finish spraying or fertilizing, you can drive back off the field via the tram lines. So I think we'll do the same thing we did at the other end. I'll switch those off. Do it down into the corner. And we'll just fill that little bit in so we're not missing any. I say this is <laughs> this is not how you do, do tram lines, but this is like the easiest way to get them to look good anyway and um, normally I don't do that so much in the corner because I think on most of my fields in no man's land I've got curved corners so I don't really have to mess around I can just carry on around the headlands uh, following them as they are so if we drop that down again I do think these uh, tram lines are a little bit wide though I don't know if you can actually adjust the width of them I think you can change the spacing but I don't know if you can actually change how wide it leaves them so we'll just bring that round and then meet up with the edge of that uh, pass around the head in there and then we'll continue that I've just come up to the end of the first pass well second pass round for the headland so what I usually do to get these to line up now is if we carry on up to where these two meet might be a little bit tricky we might have to just go back a little bit now we've just taken out that tram line a little bit and what I usually do is let's pull that back I went a little bit too far there so if we turn off um, drop this down I mean turn off the seed drill or drop that down you can still put the tram lines in uh, but you don't take away from like re-drill over the existing tram lines if you leave the seed drill on what you end up with is a gap where a bit like that there where I broke the tram line it like re-drills the previous tram lines you put in so if we just tidy that little bit up I'll just drop that down again and then we can join those up So that's the first pass round the headland. They do look a little bit wide actually. Um, so we're probably probably on those passes we're probably losing about 50% of the crop um, by putting them in but hey ho. <laughs> so what I'll do now is turn those off completely and then I'll do the third pass around the inside of this. So that kind of gives you the 18 meter, 18 meter width then from the edge of the field. So when you come to do your spraying, spreading, you know where the next kind of rows of tram lines are. So again, I'll enable the enhanced vehicle control guidelines. 
So the next row down coming up the field will be with no tram lines and then you do the tram lines in blocks of three passes. So this will be the third pass from this edge of the field. So you'll do one more pass, tram lines, and then one pass without, and then work your way across the field. Right, I've done all the centre of the field minus the rows that we'll put tram lines in. So what I need to do now is work out which way to put them in. I don't quite think it's going to work. Um, what I usually do when I do the spraying is I'll do one four pass round headland so we'd be coming back around this way and then the first row we'd probably go up is this one so we'd go up that first row come down the second one up that third one down the fourth one and then maybe too sharp of a turn to go back round because it's right on the bend so ideally that one rather than try and loop it all the way back round you bring it back onto this one and then go off this way which then obviously doesn't work for getting off the field and there is a tiny little bit down the bottom and um, so what we could do with is yeah it's going to be a little bit awkward say so I probably the access into the field may not have been in the best place may have been better putting it in somewhere else but okay so I think I've worked it out or the best way to, it's not probably not the best way I think if you put the tram lines coming into the field in a better position it would be a bit easier but the way these the field works with how they're going it'll be better to come round this way and then start going up and down from the end of this first row uh, from this end so sometimes it's just a bit awkward that you end up having to go around the field multiple times uh, it's also a little bit more difficult with a smaller drill than what I'm used to so if we turn off the actual drill itself or enable the tram lines and then if we drop that down and try and keep in the existing tram lines as best as possible it's not done a great job there and then bring that round say so I do think these just seem like they're a little bit too wide like there's quite a lot missing there a tiny little bit we've missed there as well um, but that's basically how we join them up is I uh, switch off switch the tram lines on but switch the drill off and then you don't re-drill over your existing ones so what the case of now is just going up this one turn to the left and then come down the next row and then turn again to the right on that end and then up down and then we should come out on the tiny little row at the far end of the corner and then straight back up towards the end of the field So I say, it's, this is probably not the best way to do it. Now if I was to do this field again, I'd probably do the, um, say put that first section where you drive onto the field in a different place now. Now I know how, how it works out a little bit better. I, to be honest, you could always do that last. It would probably be better to do the headland first, leave the bit going off the field or onto the field until you've um, done this last thing you can drive off and then you know if you reverse what you've just done it should all work out so if we turn off the drill now but keep the drill lowered and then keep the tram lines on and just try and bring it round as best as we can so it may be a little bit more difficult to get to look nice with a smaller drill we'll try our best turn it back on and then you can switch the enhanced vehicle control mod or GPS back on. But so it's not perfect, but it doesn't look too bad. I'll have to have a look in the settings and see if we can narrow the uh, the rows because that's 
could do with being a slightly narrower because uh, when you come to do the fertiliser you're better off with narrow ties anyway because you still will risk destroying edge of the crop because of the way the crop destruction works it doesn't pick up perfectly on the tram line so it, sometimes it goes a little bit out wider than the actual wheels themselves and you can end up destroying quite a bit of crop either side if you've got normal tyres on um, you're okay in the first growth stage obviously there's no crop destruc destruction but if you're in the later stages and you're fertilising or spraying weeds and it would be better to put um, narrows on and we'll turn that off but we'll keep it lowered and then bring it round into that tram line and then back out again into this one once we're clear of those tram lines you can turn that on you say that one again it looks like the drill hasn't gone far enough down that's not a very good one it's like we've kind of gone half and half <laughs> so this is definitely not perfect but so when I did them on no man's land I was using the 9 meter drill and because it's slightly wider spacings it seemed to work a little bit better it may be better if you alternate rows rather than come back straight back up the next one um, that way then you're not trying to do like a complete full turn probably be better to get the row turning onto the tram line then going straight across and then coming down the uh, the row after that one rather than go down this one I wouldn't mean you have to crisscross across the field a little bit so I'm gonna get this one finished I'm gonna do the linseed as well in that section of the field because we can plant that this month and then I'll get all that finished as well so this will be all our field done so then all we'll need to do is take care of any weeds that grow oh well, definitely we'll have weeds because we haven't ploughed um, and then we'll also need to fertilize which we can do next month or one or the other so either fertilize uh, weed next month and then fertilize the month after that Right, we are all done. I've just finished planting the linseed in the second half of the field. It's <laughs> the tram lines aren't perfect by any means, but it kind of gets you to show you what they're like and adding them in kind of adds a little bit more realism, even though it's not quite the best way we could have done it. So this field is all done, and then we've got the linseed in this section. So nitrogen is both showing for bad. So we'll need to get some fertilizer on these. I'm not sure if we were to roll this now, um, I think it may roll over the the tram lines um, and then set those as, because I think these, uh, the tram lines are like cultivated texture I think. So I think it may roll those, set this to rolled but set this to seed bed, um, so it may wipe out the uh, tram lines but obviously when the crop grows the crop won't grow where the tram lines are so you'll still see the tram lines so I think it, if you want to use the tram lines now for going over with a spreader before you roll uh, you can or I'm not 100% sure how it will look if you actually roll I don't know if this will sh these tram lines will show up via the rolling it's not something I've actually tried yet so what we need to do is, we're going to get this spreader on, I think that'll be the last job we do for today. So if we drop off the seed drill, I'm just going to park this in here, out the way for now and I'll get this into one of the sheds. I'll have a bit of a tidy up. So if we just drop it up down here, get this disconnected, so remove the hoses, drop that off. I don't know what's in the spread off, it should be fertiliser. I don't know if we've actually got enough fertilizer to do these fields uh, but this is an 18 meter spreader so it works perfectly for our tram lines don't know if I don't think there's lime in there I'm pretty sure I did some fertilizing after I did the lime so we'll PTO on uh, get the cable hooked up uh, oh yeah solid fertilizer 5056 that seems quite a lot well, I wasn't expecting that much to be in there but if there was fertilizer in there probably a few hundred litres so 
So what we'll do is we can come onto our tram lines and we can turn this on and then effectively we should just be able to drive following our tram lines around the field and we should pretty much be uh, getting a nice spread on the fertiliser as you can just see where it's slightly going darker so yeah this spreader is perfect for the 18 meter tram lines if you want to stick within the tram lines obviously if you've got a wider spreader uh, one of the adjustable ones better then you can obviously reduce the width to 18 meters so you're not overspreading so we'll do one full pass around the headland and then we'll do the centre of the field to set our nitrogen we don't have the benefit of the crop in the ground so ideally with a precision farming uh, you would if you're not fertilizing while you put the crop in you are better off waiting for the first or second growth stage of the crop and then using the sensor so i think a lot of tractors you can have the sensor added to the tractor uh, but it only works during daylight hours so it's an optional extra with precision farming on some tractors uh, or you can get the crop sensor that goes on the front of the tractor which senses the actual crop itself so you do need a crop to be actively growing in the field for it to have any benefit I think the way it works kind of in game is it just reduces the amount of fertilizer you will use uh, so it is beneficial to do it that way rather than doing it this way so we're just setting a base limit for nitrogen or barley on the soil type and if you use the crop sensor with the crop growth it can adjust the nitrogen levels to how the crops are growing but I say either way I don't know if there's any benefit to the environmental score from using the crop sensor may possibly be I think if we can in the future get the crop sensor well, at the moment we can't afford to buy one because uh, we don't have a drill that can fertilize at the same time so we're always going to have to fertilize separately so we could always get the crop sensor and wait for the crop to be actively growing and then fertilize so once we've done the one pass if we now go up this way if I've got this right no I think I should have gone <gasps> yeah I shouldn't have come up this way <laughs> this is why I've literally only just done this I should have carried on round the headland and then got up that next row uh, never mind Uh, we're just finishing the last row of fertilizer on the linseed field and then that will be us all done for today and for September so next month we're more than likely going to have to look at dealing with the weeds I'm not sure how that will be yet it depends what weeds we've got so whether that will be a mechanical weed or herbicide via a sprayer so it's something we'll have to take a look at next month because we should have the first stages of growth uh, on the crop and also the weeds also next month I'm going to try and see if we can get a little bit of money to expand our farm a little bit and add a new operation so, yeah, it's a few tiny little bit missed bits uh, it's not ideal but they are very very tiny so we can just head back to the yard following the tram lines round so yeah next time I'll do want to try and see if we can get a little bit of extra money so I may look at doing a contract um, just to give us a little bit of money to do that for next time uh, we'll also probably have to check up on the animals uh, so may need to mix up some more total mix ration for the cows and check on those and stuff so we'll do that next time so yeah that's pretty much it for this one I so say we've now got another pallet of cheese the, uh, Carmsden Farm cheese. I'm going to get this back into the shed. Yeah, so if you've enjoyed this episode, uh, uh, don't forget to give it a like. I really appreciate that. And if you've not yet subscribed to the channel, then please do consider subscribing. I've got more Farm Simulator 22 Let's Play videos coming up on Carmsden Farm as we tr 
continue trying to make progress here. I did mention in one of the return videos about possibly um, jumping onto a new map when one came out because um, obviously this one's been out a while. Uh, PTO off and transferring over the equipment and the animals. At the moment I'm in no kind of immediate rush to do that. Um, I'm more than happy to continue on this map for a while and get more progress on. And then if a suitable map does come out and we've made a, a fair bit of progress then I'll look to probably see about transferring over. Um, but like I say at the moment we'll just continue on here. I continue trying to expand and explore the map a little bit more. So again I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you again. Goodbye.